Hi there, traders. This is Brad Gilbert with the Daily Market Insight for Monday, the 8th of May. All right, just a quick recap of Friday's non-farm payrolls data. Now, the initial uh, numbers, you saw a little spike up in the dollar, and we saw some much stronger uh, US non-farm payroll numbers. But that was uh, corrected with the uh, revisions in the previous month, pretty much basically offset the stronger numbers. Okay, the unemployment rate, bit of a surprise as well. It's 3.4% gave it that little bit of a strong dollar tone. But when we look at the uh, the major instruments, and I'll show you those in a second, there wasn't a huge amount of um, movement. Okay, overall, the underlying number there did give us a little bit of a dollar strength, but that was short-lived, as I was saying. Now, on the contrary to that, the Canadian numbers, right, stronger employment change, and I think it's like the fifth or sixth month where they've had um, really strong uh, or improved unemployment. Right, they've been expecting a bit of a blowout. This goes some way to pointing the Bank of Canada to maybe potentially more rate hikes if uh, the economic numbers keep coming in strong. And as I was saying, like non-farm payrolls, the positioning of the market with the dollar and the regional banking crisis and everything else like that was going to be a bit convoluted. The better opportunity was potentially the CAD, and it really did work out. You'll see that in a minute when I show you the charts. It, it's had a really big move now. Let's just focus on what's happening today. Okay, the BAJ minutes have already come out. So they've sort of come and gone. Um, not a lot to read in there, the usual sort of conjecture. Now, as far as sort of trading opportunities, there's some numbers here which, you know what, you go back a few years, they would be absolutely inconsequential. But the positioning of the economies these days, inflation, housing markets are very important. So keep an eye on the Australian building approvals. Um, there's no expectations for these numbers. Previous number, 4%. The net business conditions, uh, 16, and the business confidence, minus one. Right now, these are low to normal impacting. But I tell you what, if there's significant variance in these numbers, then you can start to see uh, a few opportunities in the markets. Now, don't forget, it's a UK holiday today, right? So when I'm looking at the uh, the potential data, and it's very easy to sort of focus on what's happening because we've only got really the Aussie numbers coming out, right? So market will be a little bit quiet, but just having a look across the board, Aussie Kiwi, well, we saw a bit of a clean out. It's come back into the middle of the range. Aussie Yen's sort of been doing a bit of a dance, but heading topside. Aussie Swiss, like Dollar Swiss, a very nice sort of trend. It's sort of topping out here just above 60 to figure. Euro Aussie sort of slightly broken down and Sterling Aussie, well, it's sort of hanging in there, but Potentially, with trend lines both sides of the market, it could sort of do a bit of bit of both. And uh, Aussie CAD, well, a bit of a clean out here on the top side, but it looks like it's drif drifting back into that sort of weaker Aussie CAD range. Now, this makes sense, right? You just sort of piece this together. Now, Canadian employment numbers very strong, potentially further rate hikes in uh, Canada. Now, sterling, right? Inflation is out of control over there. So to me, I think this... The Bank of Canada, or sorry, Bank of Canada, Bank of England's got a lot of work to do to sort of really uh, wind that back in. So I'm seeing potentially sterling. I know the Aussie there could be further rate hikes, but probably less so than the UK. I can see sort of potential topside here, and the same for Euro. Right, the ECB officials are talking about starting to uh, another couple of rate hikes coming up. That should really push Euro Aussie to the topside. So. Just looking at the hourly charts, but you look think, well, this is breaking down. Um, Sterling Aussie's middle of the range. The devil's in the detail. If you just come back over here, if I just have a look at Euro Aussie, right? Yeah, it has drifted lower. It's like a bit of a clean out on the downside of stale, long Euro Aussie positions. But overall, on the daily and the weekly charts, it's sort of heading up, right? So I think... With economic numbers, the way they come out, we can start to see a bit more cross-activity because the Bank of England, the ECB, RBA, RBNZ, for instance, they are all sort of in slightly different phases in the Bank of Canada there as well. So potentially looking for opportunities to get into the bigger trend, right, which is on the daily charts. And this goes the same for Sterling Aussie, right? I'm really talking about today because it's we've obviously got this Aussie data coming out. Uh Sterling Aussie on the alleys, well, it has been sort of nicely going up, has topped out a bit, but it could be a, a potential entry there on the resistance line. And you can see here on the dailies, it is uh, cranking to the top side 
on the weeklies. There's a trend line a, a fair way up, but uh, you know, potential. I, I I just like the chance of, of the interest rate differential really coming into play here on the uh, Aussie crosses. All right, so that's where I'm s- sort of looking at this stage. Now, don't forget, uh, if I just come back to the major data, right, we've got, uh, there's a couple of things coming out uh, in Europe. If I can just get, uh, what do I do with those? Oh, yeah, let's have a look at the Monday. You'll see there's uh, some German numbers coming out, right? German industrial output. To me, this is pretty important, right? Germany is the hub of the Eurozone. It's the engine room. So if you're starting to see industrial output fall here, which the numbers are suggesting we will, then uh, this could be a move on euro, right? It's sort of like a bit of an imbalance. You're thinking, well, weaker industrial output, that's that's not good for the economy. How can they be raising interest rates? Well, it's more about inflation, but this is where you can start to see the central banks sort of get a little bit twisted and tied up. The uh, EU Syntex Cint- uh, Index also coming out. So we've got a situation where economic numbers are starting to sort of Come out a little bit weaker in Europe, but you know what? We're raising interest rates because inflation's out of control. It's, it's one of those weird dynamics that we have to keep an eye on. But for me, the Aussie numbers, okay, could be a little bit of a dark horse. Once again, looking for significant variance in these numbers to get something moving. All right, so that's where we are, guys. If I just bring you back just quickly, just to give you a look at the global markets, technically. The dollar index sort of back in the middle of the range as is euro after those non-farm payrolls. Gold, well, it's sort of topped out again. We are seeing nice clean outs to the downside. We do have a good trend line here. You know what? It's a bit of a no-brainer. If everything sort of settles down, well, then gold will smash through that trend line on the downside. We can see a nice move there. Uh, oil has had a massive clean out. Resistance back at 74, the figure. And just after those non-farm payrolls, a bit of pressure off the US equity markets. Okay, we are expecting that last hike last week to be the last one from the Fed. You know, stronger non-farms. Maybe it's not over yet. We'll see how it goes. And uh, Bitcoin and the crypto is sort of just drifting lower at this point, which to me tells me there's a good chance for gold to break down here because that's uh, where the sort of safe haven trade has been up up till now. All right. The uh, and just last but not least, just looking at the uh, at the major currencies, as I said, like there's there's not a lot going on. Sterling against the dollar trending higher. You got to think that's going to come into play with the ECB with higher rates. Aussie's do- doing its best to try and get higher, as is the Kiwi. I still think we're going to see a period of dollar weakness, and here's that nice move on Friday on the dollar CAD. So we've got uh, a few things. Well, dollar Swiss is trending lower, but that's you know a little bit of a stronger non-farm sort of gave a bit of a boost. So there you have it. To me, the the money's in euro, sterling, Aussie, and Kiwi. That's where my sort of focus is, is sort of heading. You know, weaker numbers in the US gives these currencies a chance to shine. It'll bring back the dollar as being a bit more competitive as well. But uh, today, keep an eye on those building um, uh, approvals. And the NAB business conditions, that's the sort of focus for the uh, Australasian market today, okay? Industrial output in the Eurozone, and there you have it. All right, guys, that's the Daily Market Insight. Good luck. All the best. Cheerio.